Good evening. How's everyone doing? Come on, you can be a little bit more excited than that. <laughs> so I want to start off by asking everyone to close their eyes. And close your eyes, everyone. <laughs> Nobody likes to do these things. Now imagine what it would be like if tomorrow you woke up and you had no credit cards or debit cards in your wallet. You go to the bank and there's no checking or savings account in your name. You don't even have any form of insurance, health, life, auto, nothing. Well, I think it's safe to say that we would all probably lose it, but for the two billion unbanked people in this world, this is their every day. Unbanked. Some of you may have heard this term before. It's a word that's been gaining momentum over the last few years. The concept is simple. There's a financial gap in most of the developing world that banks and other financial institutions have yet to fill. Now, when we walk around Chicago or other parts of the United States and other countries, it's really typical to find banks or payday lenders or other financial organizations around any street. But in most parts of the developing world, this is rare. Oftentimes, people have to take long means of transportation and walk miles just to see a bank. And by the end of the day, it costs them their entire workday. To make matters worse, banks have tried to introduce a traditional American banking model in these very diverse markets with tellers and normal financial products. And it doesn't make sense. But here's the problem. There's a lack of trust, information, and access. And because these are cash-based economies, cash is always queen. But you're probably asking, how do people save, budget, do anything with their financials if they have access to nothing? It's called a mobile phone. There are over 780 million mobile phone users in Africa alone. Yeah, the majority of these phones are those old Nokia feature phones we used to use back in the day. But the rate at which mobile phone penetration is taking off in these emerging markets is insane. People communicate with friends and family, they send money back and forth, they pay bills, they access social media, they get mobile advertisements, they access everything. Tablets and computers are completely unnecessary when you have access to the world in the palm of your hand. And what's more, Africa has made our financial technology look like a joke. Mobile wallets are text message away, and you can find them on the majority of phones throughout Africa. Now, I'm passionate about mobile financial technology because I've seen the impact it can create and the lives it can improve. I believe that technology is what can scale change, and it's what will ultimately eradicate global poverty. I'm a serial social entrepreneur. And when I began examining the global poverty alleviation space, I knew we were missing something. So I did what any other rational person would do. I quit my job, I launched a startup, and I went to Africa. <laughs> now, my journey begins with a group of resilient, determined, wholehearted, and passionate women. They made me laugh, they made me cry, and they showed me what's really important in life. These women are from a northern region of Uganda called Kikum, a farming town and one of the first to be hit by the Lord's Resistance Army in the late 90s, massacring hundreds of thousands and destroying town after town. Although these communities might look and feel dilapidated, the women show no signs of remorse or suffering. I spent my days interviewing women and conducting research in order to collect information on financial well-being from spending habits to cash flow to savings goals and anything related. These women live on less than a dollar a day, yet they always had a smile on their face, and they were completely driven to improve their family's well-being. To my surprise, every one of them was an entrepreneur, from homemade remedies to alcohol brewing to selling crops in the market. Each woman dreamt of investing in their small businesses to create more opportunity for their children. But like we all know, it's not always that simple. You would imagine the lack of resources and institutional barriers were one of the biggest problems perpetuating global poverty. But there's a huge issue that none of us like to talk about and that we oftentimes push aside, and it's called gender inequality. 
No matter where we were, it felt as if men sat around and drank all day while their wives were out in the farm digging for 10 hours a day, running the house, taking care of the kids, running the business, and the list could go on. The anger I felt observing all of these inequalities and hardships for women was indescribable. At first I thought this has to be a stereotype, but it wasn't. I had to constantly remind myself that change takes time. And through every hardship women have faced through society, we always come out stronger. I walked into these communities with one belief and walked out even more confident in it. And that's women are the solution. It's something that I like to call the she effect. And let's be honest, this is something we've all learned uh, from a young age. From as early on as I can remember, my mother has always told me, Trisha, when you invest in a woman, you're investing in her entire community. When women have enough capital, they send their children to school, resulting in a more educated population. And for each additional year of schooling, a girl's future wages increase by 20% and a country's chances of civil war decreased by nearly 5%. My time in Uganda reaffirmed this multiplier effect. These women are not just resilient and determined, building better communities for their families. They are change makers, community drivers, innovative entrepreneurs, exceptional mothers. You know, I honestly think the only way to describe them is a badass. <laughs> Now I want you all to meet Konsei, a true badass. My team and I were driving into town one day and I saw this woman riding her bike with a newborn baby wrapped on her back and I desperately wanted to stop and talk with her. Konsei is a subsistence farmer, meaning she spends 10 hours in the field digging every day just to supply enough food for herself and her children. I was amazed by her strong work ethic, but even more by her savvy. She told me she had two babies, but her husband had just left her. That means she was stuck to raise the children, manage the farm, rate, uh, run the business, and take care of the kids all by herself. She was only 21 years old. I instantly fell in love with her. Her soft-spoken manner, her beauty, her grit, her benevolence. Konsi is the story of women around the world. No matter what obstacles are thrown at her, she will fight tirelessly to ensure she leaves a better world for her children. Although my heart aches deeply for her, I feel a sense of hope and encouragement whenever I think of her. She gives me the strength to drive forward every day with this startup, because if I don't continue building solutions for women like her, who else will? If we truly want to make an impact in the world and solve some of our greatest problems, we must start with the real change makers, women. Global financial inclusion begins with women and ends with women. Investing in Konsi was the greatest decision I ever made because I know that impact reached her children and all the women around her. Whether it's her story or the she effect that inspires you, I urge you to take this message and pass it along. Now is the time for women because we are the solution. Thank you.